We're going to be checking our main rotor bearings right now. So what we want to do is find out the health of our roller bearing in the front, which, which we're going to measure, and our thrust bearings in the back of the rotor. But it's the main rotor bearings that we're checking right now. The front one we're going to check is the radial bearing, okay? And we're checking for radial, radial movement. But right now we're going to check the axial movement, which is the movement in and out of the rotor. Okay, so I've set up on the end of the shaft. Now, in your application, you'll have the coupling hub here. So you're going to set up on the coupling somehow to get a measurement like this. Again, you're up probably up in the air. So you're going to have to figure out a way to do that. I've got my trusty stick here, but I'm going to check to see how much movement we have on this shaft in and out. So I'm prying out like this, see if I have any movement. I can push in, but there's not going to be anything there. I'll check it again. How much movement do I have? I have nothing. Is that good or bad? I'm going to check my chart. So my main compressor inspection sheet I have here has all the measurements for a compressor. So axial bearing float it says the tolerance is two thousandths of an inch. We have zero. So this, this is perfect. So the back bearings, the thrust bearings, are in perfect shape. Now we're going to check the radial movement. So now I want to find out how much movement I have up and down on this shaft. So I'm going to have to change the orientation of this. So I'm going to move this up a little bit, move it around, get this a little bit looser here. I'm going to put it on the end of the shaft here, tighten this up. I'm using a med magnetic base here on the compressor. Sometimes they have a it's a little hard for them to stick because there might be some paint or you might have a lot of grease or oil there. It depends how clean your machine is. So you might have to clean off some of this. I'm going to zero this. And I can always, I can do it with my dial here as well. So what's happening is it's touching a little bit here. So I don't want that to, I don't want my instruments interfering with, sorry, my um, magnetic base interfering with it. So I'm going to tighten this up. Zero that. So now we're going to see how much movement we have up and down. So again, again. Get my levers out. I'm going to put it underneath. I'm going to give it a bit of a lift. You don't have to do it really hard. But you can see how much movement there is there. We're getting four thousandths of an inch. You can see the movement. So now we're going to check it against our chart. Is that good or bad? So it says radial bearing float. It says seat chart one below. Why does it say that? Because different size compressors have different float allowances. So this particular one is a 601, VSS 601, and it allows for seven thousandths of an inch maximum bearing radial float. So we're at four, so we're in good shape here. So a couple of the different ones you can see, there's six thousandths, seven thousandths, but they're all six or seven thousandths.